my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life, whom shall I dread? When those who do evil draw near, they stumble and fall. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I welcome you to the Eucharistic celebration for the, the Tuesday of the 10th week in Ordinary Time. As we resume the ordinary season in the liturgical calendar of the church, we are reminded that having been ennobled with the manifold gifts of the Holy Spirit, we have been mandated to, with those gifts that we have received, go out and bear fruit. And this is how we show ourselves as salt of the earth and light of the world. And the more we do this, the more we bear fruits that will last in the world. For the many times that we have rather kept our gifts and not put them to use, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. We have been specifically requested to pray at this Mass for Leon, Kenton, and Margie Jeffrey. And this is requested by Margaret Jeffrey. We've also been asked to pray in thanksgiving to God and implore God's continued blessing and guidance for Lynette Edwards on her birthday. And this is requested by self. And then Sylvia Nelson's family is asking that we pray for the eternal repose of the soul of Sylvia Nelson. O oh God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
reading from the first book of the Kings. The stream in the place where Elijah lay hidden dried up, for the country had no rain. And then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, up and go to Sarapspat, a Sidian town, and stay there. I have ordered a widow there to give you food. So he went off to Sidon, and when he reached the city gate, there was a widow gathering sticks. Addressing her, he said, please bring a little water in a vessel for me to drink. She was setting off to bring it when he called her after her. Please, he said, bring me a scrap of bread in your hand. As the Lord your God lives, she replied, I have no baked bread, but only a handful of meal in a jar and a little oil in a jug. I am just gathering a stick or two to go and prepare this for myself and my son to eat, and then we shall die. But Elijah said to her, do not be afraid to go and do as you have said, but first make me a little scone of it for me and bring it to me, and then make some for yourself and for your son. And thus the Lord speaks, the God of Israel. Jar of meal shall not be spent, jug of oil shall not be emptied, before the day when the Lord sends rain on the face of the earth. The woman went and did as Elijah told her, and they ate the food, she himself and her son. The jar of meal was not spent, but the jug of oil emptied, just as the Lord had foretold to Elijah. The word of the Lord. Lift up the, the light of your face on us, O Lord. Lift up the light of your face on us, Lord. When I answer, when I call, answer me, O God of justice. From anguish, you release me. Have mercy on, and hear me. O men, how long will your hearts be closed? Will you love what is futile? and seek what is false. Lift up your oh Lord. It is the Lord who grants favors to those whom he loves. The Lord hears me whenever I call him. Fear not, do not sin. Ponder on your bed and be still. Lift up the light of your face on us, O oh Lord. What can bring us happiness? May many say. Lift up the light of your face on us, O Lord. You have, you have put into your, my heart a great joy. Then have from abundance of corn and wine. Lift up your head, Lord. Gospel acclamation. <laughs> like bright stars because you are offering it the word of life. The Lord be with you. 
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt becomes tasteless, what can make it salty again? It is good for nothing. It can only be thrown out to be trampled on the food by men. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hilltop cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp to put it under a tub. They put it on the lampstand where it shines for everyone in the house. In the same way, your light must shine in the sight of men, so that seeing your good works, they may give the praise to your Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Your light must shine in the sight of men, so that seeing your good works, they may give the praise to your Father in heaven. We have a tendency of thinking that being a Christian is some form of a title, maybe a social title, an appellation of some sort. Some of us think that when we become Christians, it has made us some very special breeds in the social classes available in the society that we live in. But today, Jesus reminds us that though we're just emanating from the season of Easter, and just a few days ago, we were infused with the gift of the Holy Spirit, we must know that these gifts are not ornamental. They are not meant to decorate us. No. They were bequeathed on us for the purpose of the function that the Lord has for us in the ministry of the church. It is to be considered that the Lord gives us instruments for the labor that he sets us on. And that's why shortly after the season of Easter, we are plunged into the ordinary season of a year. And I always like to correct that when the church uses the language ordinary, the church is not saying useless or what is not of any purpose. That's how many of us like to understand that word. But it's not so. When the church says ordinary season, the church is saying the basic season that characterizes the ordinary way of life of a Christian. This is how we should live. This is how we should behave. This is what we should do on a daily basis. And what should we do on a daily basis? Now, what we should do on a daily basis is already defined by the instruments of labor that our Lord has given to us. We have been given the gifts of the Holy Spirit. What accrues from the gifts that we have received is the expectation of the Lord that we will bear fruits. That's why you see that the church teaches. After, that, after insisting that we have the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit, the church talks about the 12 fruits of the Holy Spirit. The gifts are the, Lord, the Lord's present to us, the Lord's assistance to us as we go about our daily tasks. The fruits reflect our debt to the Lord. What we owe the Lord that we must pay him. Because once he gives a talent, he expects that those who receive the talent would yield. And this is the basis of the parable of the talents, which we'll read in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, or in Luke's Gospel, chapter 19. So the Lord expects us to bear fruit. So consciousness of this, of this duty is what requires the use of the symbols that we see in the Gospel today. Jesus says we are salt of the earth and also says that we are light of the world. What is the function of salt? Salt could either preserve or salt could either sweeten. If we are sought, then the Lord relies on us to preserve gospel values. The Lord relies on us to hold on to the ideals of a human society. The Lord does not want us to be drifted into the secularism that overwhelms us now in the contemporary world. No matter how hard it gets, the Lord depends on us to sustain the ideals that he has infused into the human society. And also, by manifesting our identity as 
salt. We are to add value to human life. That's what salt does. It adds tastes. We are to make the life of man delectable. We are to make the life of woman sweetened by our ministration, by the charity of our action. That's exactly how we function as salt. As light, the Lord relies on us to become beacons of hope in our world. The Lord wants us to be the guides that instruct the ignorant and set others in the way of uprightness and truth. And our consciousness and our willingness to exhibit the demands of this vocation would depend upon our willingness to submit to the will of the Lord at all times, trusting and obeying his instructions. And this depends on our depth or the depth of our sacrifice, our willingness to let go, our willingness to obliterate ourselves and be lost in the body of Christ, our willingness to identify with Jesus, who, according to the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians, though was God, but did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself and became as men are. It is this kenosis that characterizes the authentic Christian life. Our ability not to think of ourselves only, but of others. In fact, to think of others first. That's what defines the Christian vocation. And we do this not because the other is meriting of it, not because the other is deserving of it, but for God's sake. And that is charity. It is charity that makes us to hold on to what God says, even if man does not support it. It is charity that makes us pay attention to the needs of others, even if they do not merit it. And this is why in the first reading, we're giving very sublime examples in the personality of Elijah on the one hand and in the personality of the widow of Zarephath on the other hand. Elijah lived in the days of profound idolatry under the leadership of Ahab, the king of the northern portion of Israel. At this time, because of his marriage to Jezebel, the gentle woman from Phoenicia, he found himself making policies that were against the religious policies that God had already taught the Jews. And because of that, in no time, idolatry became the order of the day. While it was easy for many people to keep quiet, as many did, Elijah, under the guidance of the law of the Lord, could not hold on and do evil like others. No matter how hard it gets in our world to do what is good, we must know that the Lord requires us to make the difference. And that's how we become sword, and that's how we become light. Of course, this comes with consequences, and this is exactly how Elijah became troubled for the many times and restless. But we should know, especially as we see in the life of Elijah, that the Lord who calls us will also give us the grace that sustains us through our journey. The Lord will not leave us abandoned. And you see how the Lord provided for Elijah at the brook cherry, and after that time also provided for Elijah from the destitution of a poor widow. That already tells us that not only was God remembering Elijah, but God was also remembering somebody somewhere else. Now, it is striking how this woman comes into the picture. This crisis was predominantly a Jewish crisis. But the Lord tells us that there's a social implication to everything that we do, good or bad. And it has far-reaching effect to all peoples that live on the face of the earth. This woman was a Sidonian, as we are told. So she was not Jew, she was Gentile. So the drought that was already threatening to obliterate human life in the Jewish territory of the Northern Kingdom was also spreading to the borders outside the Jewish territories, even including Sidonian territories, as we hear in the first reading of today. But what is striking is Sidon and the cities around it were really not people who were oriented towards God. You would also know, as you read in chapters that follow, that Jezebel, the evil queen of Ahab, was also a Sidonian. So the Phoenicians were known for their profound idolatry and the worship of false gods, such as Baal and Asherah. But amidst this idolatry, there was a woman whose heart was inclined towards God. So this tells us that no matter how evil things get around us, no matter how bad things get around us, it is not an excuse for us to forego the law of the Lord. We cannot do evil and expect good to come out of it. And this is a, a very much important lesson for us today, overwhelmed as we are by the pangs of secularism. The times we live in are times where it no longer makes sense to hold on to gospel ideals. The times that we live in are times that it's now shameful to even talk of ourselves as Christians. We think that if we must align with those who are considered civilized, we must hold on to things that are propounded by pagan philosophies, by secularist ideas. But today we are told that if we have to be the only ones standing for the gospel of Christ, so be it. It doesn't mean that we would find it convenient. In fact, we would be persecuted. 
But then the Lord will always remember us and he will send help from his shrine. And that's how the Lord sent help to this woman who also supplied help to Elijah the prophet. And we also know that this was not the end of it because Elijah would remain with this woman. And in the verses that end this chapter, we would hear that even that child of hers eventually died. But then through the ministration of Elijah, this woman was raised. All of these serve to tell us, my dear brothers and sisters, that for those who love God, all things work together unto good. And so what the Lord wants from us in the days that follow is that we should seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and everything that we need will be added to us. Our commitment is to go and bear fruit. And that is how we prove ourselves as Christians because by our fruit we shall be known. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be acceptable to you as an oblation and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, a duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are clean. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, 
so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Clyde Martin our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, a chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Have mercy, have mercy. 
the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Abides in love, abides in God, and God in him. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil, and lead us to what is right, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you now and forever. Go for the Mass is ended. Wishing you a fruitful week ahead. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. And we pray that our unity may one day be restored. And they know we are Christians by all love, by all love. Yes, they know we are Christians by all love. We 
will walk with his brother, we will walk hand in hand. We will walk with each other, we will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. And they know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they know we are Christians by our love. We will walk with each other. We will walk side by side. We will walk with each other. We will walk side by side. And we'll call each man's dignity and save each man's pride. And they know we are Christians by our love. By our love. Yes, they know we are Christians by our Thank you.